Beloved, hear these words. Because I was made for you, my soul is restless with longing until it rests in you. My soul is hungry for you, hungry to be connected to you, hungry to notice you in me and around me. But here I sit, weeping day and night, so hungry, with tears for food, abandoned into darkness, crushed in spirit. Those who know I look to you now stand over me, mocking, where's God now? Why can't God rescue you? I open my heart in prayer, and sobbing questions flood out. Why me? Why now? Help me, God. I remember how others have looked to me for counsel, how I've led worship and taught your word, how others have looked to me for leadership. You seem close then, not now. You send that love without fail every day, and I respond with a song to you every night. God, my steadfast, my steadfast one, have you forgotten my name, the shape of my life? Am I to move onward in my own strength? Why won't this heaviness leave me? Then there are those who see my misery, who know I look to you for life. Their taunts cut me deep. Where's God now? Why can't God rescue you? Oh, my soul, you feel cut off from God, disconnected from your source. Can you bring yourself to trust that God has not abandoned you? Can you believe that you'll ever praise God again? Help. Beloved, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The translation I just read to you is of Psalm 42 by contemplative teacher Jerry Weber. In its canonical placement, Psalm 42 and 43 are a second and third stanza of a longer poem. Whether Psalm 42 and 43 were originally one psalm that was divided into two, or whether Psalm 43 was composed as a later poem to accompany Psalm 42 is not known. The vast majority of commentators treat the two psalms as a unified composition. Let me provide you with the situation when this psalm was written. The poetic location of the psalmist is separation from God. The psalmist charts this spiritual location with a broad range of intense metaphors and pleas. The psalmist longs for God. In his words, my soul is restless with longing until it rests in you. The psalmist expresses separation from the face of God. The psalmist was likely a Levitical temple priest, probably a, mus a musician, who remembers being in the presence of God, leading the procession in the house of God during the festival. This is referring to one of the three great celebrations of the Israelite liturgical year, Passover, Pentecost, and Booths. But the psalmist is now separated from the temple, singing to God from a distance. It is clear that the psalmist is lamenting being separated from God, the temple, and community. This psalm is a song for those moments when one doesn't feel like singing. It is a poem of faith for those cold nights when one doesn't feel the flames of faith flickering too warmly in one's soul. It is a psalm for those times when one feels separated from God. This is a psalm of lament. So what are the Psalms? In his book, Answering God, author and theologian Eugene Peterson describes the Psalms like this. Prayer is a language used in personal relation to God. It gives utterance to what we sense or want or respond to, to before God. God speaks to us. Our answers are our prayers. The answers are not always articulate. Silence, sighs, groaning, these also constitute responses. The answers are not always positive. Anger, skepticism, curses, these also are responses. But always God is involved, whether in darkness or light, whether in faith or despair. Also, according to Eugene Peterson, the Psalms are not a discussion about God. 
He writes, our habit is to talk about God, not to him. We love discussing God. The Psalms resist these discussions. They are not provided to teach us about God, but to train us in responding to him. We don't learn the Psalms until we are praying them. So you see, beloved, the Psalms are a manifestation of raw emotion, deep longing, honesty, desperation, a pleading for answers. In other times, the Psalms are a manifestation of heartfelt gratitude, of an overwhelming rejoice, an assurance of being loved, an encouraging expression of hope and restoration. The Psalms are a transparent and intimate conversation in His loving presence. In these two Psalms, we are invited to sense the sentiment of anguish and yet trust that God's presence is with us in the midst of despair. We are going to learn how to come to God at our most vulnerable place in our hearts and ask for vindication. Beloved, here are a few questions to contemplate in. Have you ever felt separated from God? Have you ever been in a situation where you were so restless to a point of having insomnia? Have you ever been desperate and felt desolated to a state of deep sorrow? When we observe these expressions used in Psalm 42, we get an idea of the depressing state of mind of the psalmist. We get a sense of his sentiment of despair in his words. Expressions like, my tears have been my food day and night. My soul is downcast within me. My bones suffer mortal agony. Only deep sadness can inspire such poetic language. I wonder, as he wrote these words, he also moaned and groaned. Many times, whenever we find ourselves in such emotional pain, our sentiment can be expressed in sounds, because sometimes there are no words to describe our heartache. In his reflection, call and response, the meaning of the moan and significance of the shout in Black worship, author and professor James A. Noel explains the following. The moan became the first vocalization of a new spiritual vocabulary, terrible and wonderful. It was a cry, a critique, a prayer, a hymn, a sermon all at once. The moan expressed loneliness, pain, and the inchoate hope, which later fused with biblical imagery. Its rhythm was not so, so much for the uh, syncopated beat of the West African drum as a rock and sway of the seafaring vessel which contained their bodies. Another sound that expresses intense emotion is the alm. In his book, Prayer in the Cave of the Heart, Catholic monk Cyprian Consiglio writes, alm is like a threshold sound, the liminal sound, so when Indian Christians begin and end a prayer with Aum, they are beginning and ending with what they think of as the God sound or as God ass sound. Aum resounding in Christian liturgies and in the Bible, especially in the Psalms, Aum is the groan of the afflicted, the song of the contended, anger at evil, the fervent appeal, the act of trust, the act of love. I can relate to this intense feeling of sorrow that the psalmist is uttering whenever I think about my dad's passing. 10 years ago, my father passed away and we were collaborating and organizing his memorial service. My sisters and my mother and I were very focused on everything we were preparing to celebrate my father's life. Well, during that time, I was so focused in the preparations and I got the honor to lead the memorial service, but it wasn't until after everything was over and I got to go home uh, by myself. I remember walking into the front door and going straight to my bedroom there was a heavy emotional feeling of sadness that took over me. And it was mixed emotions because I was 
Um, remember crying deeply because I realized that I was not going to see my dad anymore physically. But then at the same time, I was relieved because he was no longer suffering because he was so sick. Uh, my thoughts were everywhere. But I remember just feeling this deep sorrow and crying and sobbing in a way where I was just grunting and moaning and feeling this emotion of happiness and relief, but then at the same time, just sorrow. Anyways, that is something that um, made me think about where the psalmist was this disconnection. Here's a continuation of the psalm. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From those who are deceitful and unjust, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you cast me off? Why must I walk about mournfully because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And I will praise you with the harp, O oh God, my God. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. The key phrase that seems to provide a transition of, towards hope is vindicate me. The psalmist is asking for restoration. He's asking for redemption. His sole desire is to be joyful once again, worshiping back in the temple. We hear it in his words. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. Also, he has definitely experienced God's redeeming love before and knows who God is. He exclaims the following, Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Beloved, our spirit knows deep inside that we desperately need God's light in our life. We need his divine guidance. Also, our heart of hearts can be assured of his truth, the beautiful truth that we are his children, that we are the beloved. And whenever we find ourselves in deep darkness or deep desolation, the psalmist generally expresses that God is our deliverer, that in God is where we dwell, and that although our faith can be tested, it can also deepen and grow in time of despair. This type of deep sorrow reminds me of the last hours of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he was desperately seeking God's connection, God the Father, and his heart was so heavy on taking on the sins of the world. He was so heavy that he was about to embark on a journey to go to the cross. And we can sense that in that particular occasion where he is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and how desperate he felt. You can just imagine that he felt desolated, he felt abandoned, he felt lonely. But after all the suffering, he remained faithful and found refuge in God the Father and was vindicated in the most beautiful way, he resurrected. The psalmist ends with the following proclamation. Hope in God, for I shall praise him, my help, my God. This is the encouraging message, beloved, that we may be in the bottom of what may feel like a bottomless pit, or we may be going through a major heartache or a dark time in our lives. And through it all, we can trust that God's presence is with us and that we will be vindicated and restored once again. Amen.